Hello, welcome pen friends. This is going to be a first impressions video of a new pen in my collection and it is the Opus Omar, Opus 88 Omar in yellow and uh, it's got kind of a, a green translucent uh, barrel and I have a beautiful green ink in it that I started out with a sample. So I had this sample of uh, Colorverse Supernatural, not in here, but in here, <laughs> when I filled this pen, which it takes, a, I think, a little, uh, let's see, I wrote that down, a little over three mils that it'll take. I just completely wiped the sample out. I didn't even have enough for splatters. So then I, I finally found a place where I could order some. So I've got that ink in it. But let's look at the pen. Um, as you can probably guess from my more recent video on the Opus 88 uh, Colero, that's what got my interest peaked in this pen. And uh, let's get that one out because they, there's quite a bit of difference in, well, in style and in size between the two pens. But they're, they're both eyedroppers with that beautiful... Um, shut off valve release knob at the bottom so that you can go ahead and control your ink flow and you can uh, sh close it when it's in your pen case and when you're moving around. So um, the big difference is the nib. This has a number six nib on it and that that really um, that's what really did it for me besides the fact that I, I consider it a beautiful pen. It has that beautiful steel number six um, like a yo-wo nib on it and so I just thought wow that's that's kind of what I'm used to writing with the most other than my Lamy broad nib and uh, being familiar already with the filling system being just eyedropper I just decided to go for it because I had the opportunity so I did but let's just look at it um it does has the screw uh, cap and it has a nice sturdy clip that would do whatever you wanted to do it looks like to me you can also take it off and i only know that because of another review that i saw showed that you could just unscrew this take the clip off and put your finial back on oh gosh i should pay real good attention to what's going on here because this is um, a little bit different my setup and i could go on with things out of frame i also have it a little bit uh, in zoomed in so you can just see um Gosh, it's just got that beautiful nib. The section is very, very comfortable. I've been writing with it for long, long periods of time, and it's very, very comfortable. I found it just the same comfort level as the other one and many of my other girthy pens. So um, I'm going to put the measurements in the description box and that will make it a lot easier but it's just super comfortable for me anyway and it's got that large ink capacity it's got the uh, let's go ahead and cap it because we don't want to uh, you know create any drying situation on the end it's got the silver trim and uh, I just I find it really really pretty and there's something I'm really into green this year 2021 is when I'm filming this and so when I saw the beauty of the yellow with the green well, I just couldn't resist it, really. Because I was able to get it, I couldn't resist it. I, I could have if I wasn't able to. But uh, let's see. It has the Opus 88 printed right here on the clip. I think one of the most useful things we're going to do is compare it with other pens because it is bigger. And, and that even affects um, which of my uh, little pen sleeves, you know, that I'm going to put it in. And, and also, if I want a solo pen sleeve, I'm going to need to order a different one, I think, from um, Rickshaw. Because I have one that will go into, but it's, it's used for this other pen. Uh, and it's it's too actually the one that this one goes in it's too tight because of the uh, diameter but we'll we'll get going on that what i wanted to do was see if i could uh, show you some comparisons real quick <clears throat> i'm going to need a little more space because <laughs> i want to make sure we have room here okay so here it is now i'm going to put right beside it a gen how uh 159 in yellow let's see i'll open that up too that's got a pretty comparable um, grip section. It's a little bit different looking, but it's it's comparable. But this is heavier. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Put that there. Now, this is my other long pen 
that's my, the Jim Hines uh, custom blue storm and there's a whole thing I want to talk about that I hope I don't forget because there's they take the same nib unit which to me is really exciting you know how I like to interchange nibs so let's grab the other um, Opus 88 pen that I have this is the Colaro in red Let's see, what else can we do? Well, let's just get into what I have inked up. Basically, um, here's a Jen Hao X750, quite a bit slimmer. And that's a pretty big pen. We'll put that over here. Whoops, oh! <laughs> I'm trying to throw things. Okay, what else? Well, let's go ahead and look at the um, Twisby Go. That's got the grip section that has your suggest suggestions in it, which is very comfortable for me, but not everybody likes that kind of a grip, so... Just put that here. What else can we look at? Well, um, every, everybody's familiar with Lamy Safari. Totally different because we're, for one thing, this is the only other eyedropper we're looking at here. But uh, the grip section is different and it's a, a very small, much smaller pen with a cartridge converter or cartridge. So we'll put that over here. Whoops, that's going to go sideways. I think we about ran out of room. Uh, I don't have much else in here, so there's some repetition, but here's one. Uh, the Twisby Diamond 580. Uh, A-L-R, maybe? Anyway, it's the, it's the one that has the aluminum uh, grip, and it's an older one, but there we go. Okay. So, the last time I got this excited about a pen, as I am about this one... It was actually when I started with the Twisby um, Ecos and like I discovered the reliability and the comfort and the smoothness. It was like, it, it was just like the heavens opened up and I realized that it was going to change everything else, you know, and, and, and it did. Um, and I don't have my, my Twisby Ecos are, are on my daily use notebooks right now so I could pause and go get them. But I, I'm sure that most of us are familiar. Let me go get one anyway, because this is something that it may, it may be important to you. So let me get one. Well, my bur bullet journal was right behind me, so that was silly. Okay, let's move uh, the Opus uh, 88 Omar over, and we'll put the Twisby Eco down right next to it. <clears throat> That's the pen, or not that particular one, because my first one was a clear demonstrator, completely clear, and um, that just changed my fountain pen experience completely. It wasn't until after that that I started swapping out nibs on the Jinhao X750s and experimenting with, uh, especially like with the, the Twisby Goes and things like that. And even the 159s, those experiences came later. But the trouble-free, uh, smooth, uh, easy, maybe lazy, <laughs> almost, uh, experience of having uh, the Ecos just right every single time. And they have a high tolerance for being inked up a long time. So that was the feeling. I recognized it when I inked this. And uh, what I did was I just went ahead and... and uh, dipped the nib first into the <laughs> this is all I had was like three mils of ink in here so I kind of did it sideways and got it in that ink and uh, then uh, set it aside you unscrew right here and I just filled it up with everything that was left <clears throat> with a syringe and it just wrote with it and kept on writing let's put it that way so we can now look at some of the the writing and um, before we get to that I'll show you the packaging um, in case you haven't already seen something like it. I don't feel like the best storyteller today but but I will say that the final thing that sealed the deal on this was uh, seeing uh, I think it was right before St. Patrick's Day that uh, Lisa from Van Ness was showing this pen and I had already been looking at them and it was just like the perfect timing because I had just seen uh, a review from SBRE Brown on the clear Opus Omar with a broad nib too and I just like I already knew oh okay that's going to be a pen that that I'm going to enjoy someday you know and then when I saw it in this color, because of the fact that, that green has just been 
my color for since just as we went uh, through December and I was choosing my word for 2021 and everything. So, um, but let's just stop in and look at the packaging. It has a little sleeve that it comes in this nice gift box here. So I did order mine from Venice and it has a like a uh, magnetic, uh, you know, box thing. Comes with a little bit of instructions, which is, is cool. Um, I, I never go by that. I always just watch a video or something. And an eye drop eyedropper which I think is just too fancy to use I just use my ink syringes um, and the pen just goes right in here it, it uh, mine was in there when I got it some people I've seen had mentioned it might roll around a little but it was in perfect shape so everything was fine um, I think I mentioned that I ordered huh, that's interesting it says F no I know I have a broad nib on there <laughs> absolutely absolutely and positively uh, dropped down and made that into a broad nib so um this is the other thing i wanted to show you about it because it's exciting to me it makes it more versatile in my opinion um let's see which nib do i have where well it doesn't really matter because i actually have the nib that came on a um retro 51 tornado on my jim hines <clears throat> but they're the same, so I'm just going to show you. So the nib units are interchangeable, actually, between these three pens. So it's a number six nib unit. Um, and let me hold it up because looks just like that. I think they say Schmidt, but that's not how I, uh, when I went ahead and ordered, I ordered a nib unit like this one for this pen in broad nib. It hasn't come in yet because I just ordered it. Um, so that I could have a broad nib on the Jim Hines pen because I really, it came with a, a fine nib and I don't use it. I try, but so these are are virtually the same or they they certainly look the same and they they interchange so this is the one that came on the uh, Jim Hines pen and I wanted a broad nib and so I was messing around with the nibs now I can't with this one I don't want to get all dirty but um, this is the one that came on it and it's the same so that gives me more versatility uh, should the day come which I'm gonna laugh because that I want to put a fine nib on this one well I have one and I can just take it off of uh, this one it actually won't be on it much longer because I wanted the broad nib But that to me that matters because um, I don't have to buy a whole new pen if I suddenly get the uh, In my mind. Oh, I want a stub nib on the yellow one You know then I can get just the nib unit and because the pens are, are much more expensive So you you can just get your nib unit. That's a lot to say just to say that but I'm still in the just past the beginner mode here myself and I don't approach these things easily sometimes it takes me a while to get it through my head that it's actually uh what I'm trying to do or want to do is actually much easier so I, I thought about it because I thought well there's so many videos on these pens what am I hoping to share well I just want to share my experience with it because it's just um uh, uh, it, it might help someone or it might be interesting or, or it might be something to do on a rainy day. I don't know. Okay, so let's get into the the ink journal here. Let's see Where I have started. I had some fun in here the other day. I was looking at gray inks I had a lot of fun with that. I was doing magenta and here's some of the green ones It was so funny when I went to do this page. Whoops. Are we? Yeah I just want to make sure you can see. Uh, when I went to do this page, I didn't have any of the color verse left. This just came in through the door that came with the big bottle and the little bottle. And the place that I found it, I'm not sure if I can say it, is Troupe. And I was really, really grateful. I, I actually contacted them because I wasn't sure I hadn't ordered from them before. And I just wanted to make sure they had it in stock because they have a little online store and an, I think a in-person place so i i know from experience that sometimes at other places i needed to check anyway they had three bottles of it in so i did have the monteverdi key lime the sailor uh, mano is beautiful too let's see 
oh, here they are. I wanted, this was something I really wanted to be able to do because ink is just as important to me, actually. Um, probably get fired as a first impressions person, but there's the Sailor Manio. And then I kind of looked at this one too, but it's very, very bright. I wanted a little bit, just a tad darker, just so that, because it shows up in a nib so much better. These two both show up really good in a nib. Actually, um, so does the noodlers, but for some reason I wasn't really wanting to put noodlers in, in the pen. Even though that cleans out, I think, really well. And it's so far, in my experience, it does. And the Kelly Green. I don't know why I'm fussy about which one goes where. Robert Oster Lime Green. I hope this isn't totally crooked. Okay, Chris. <clears throat> and then Twisby Prairie Green. We're going to see that in a minute. Um, huh. <coughs> this is like that old game, the match card game, where you turn them over, but we're not turning them over. I want you to be able to see the ink name. That's the thing. Monteverde Key Lime Pie. These two, well, I thought this was bright and probably would show up. This I didn't think I'd like how it looked in a nib. And this one is beautiful, the Twisby Prairie Green. But I tried it in a nib and compared it. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this. But you just got more readability with the Colorverse Supernatural in a broad nib. And I just, here it is, the Twisby. It's really pretty, and it would have readability enough for probably 85% of the people. But I, you know, I wear reading glasses and bifocals and all this stuff, and, and I just felt like this coming through, uh, it just, I really liked it better. So, okay, I spent a lot of time on ink. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I think what we need to do now is, is write with it, probably. Let's see here. Let's find a place and I'll just write with the pen. What I do is open the, uh, the shut off valve when I'm going to write. It's already got some saturation because it'll have what was in the nib um, before. Okay, if that, that's just so I remember because if I'm going to write along, I'm going to want to make sure it doesn't uh, dry up because that shut off works really, really well so that you don't get ink in the uh, cap. And somebody mentioned flying, but I still wouldn't, I just wouldn't fly with, with my pens filled, but I know people do. <coughs> okay, let's see if we can make this a little closer, and we'll just do some writing. So I really, really super enjoy this. Now I got a number on the back, so I'm going to move it down a little bit. I should be checking to see if you can see. I hope so. Let's see. Let me make just a little bit closer. Hopefully we'll still have focus. But this is a nice wet broad nib and uh, yeah, I wasn't really holding it very good. <laughs> okay, and it is the Opus 88 Omar. Broad nib, yellow. I probably should have left it empty and filled it, but you can kind of see right here that it's green. But so it has a very, very light translucent green barrel, but you can't really tell that right now because it has the green ink in it already. Uh, the ink, of course, is Colorverse Supernatural. It's 2 p.m. 2 p.m. There's Manuel's talking clock. Okay. Uh, and if, in case you're wondering, I always kind of write like a, a, you know, a rabid little monkey. I just write fast. And sometimes I'll remind myself to slow down. And also it, it helps if you hold the pen right. But <laughs> I've been getting along with this super good. <clears throat> sometimes we get Coco Berry's little cat hair in here, but I don't think we're having that now. I just, I absolutely love it, and I've written so many letters already with this, um, and it was driving me crazy because I like to do ink splats, <clears throat> and I couldn't because I didn't have the ink. So it's just been such a good writer already, and this is, like I said, a kind of an early impression. So let me show you if it, if I can, that it's still quite wet. It'll be drying for a little while, but I really like the Colorverse inks because they have the flow, and, uh, 
I just, I don't know. I, there's something about the complexity too of it. It just, uh, it a lot of yellow tends to come out in the shading. And so I see that and I enjoy it a lot. And I was seeing that in that sailor ink too. The, um, the sailor Manyo Yukakusa was really, really cool too. Um, dark enough and and it looked good in the nib i didn't have enough left to even it's all cleaned out now uh the two mil sample which came in an ink flight is gone but that was a pretty close um not match by any means because i i do believe that was just a tad over to the darker side but anyway <coughs> that is how it's going I have been writing, this is 68 GSM Tomoe River paper, but I've been writing on the 52 uh, GSM Tomoe River paper, and I've really, really super been enjoying it for the letters. Okay, I think that's what I wanted to show you. Um, I look forward to coming back with a, a full review, and I will try to remember all the, you know, dotting of the I's and the <laughs> P's and Q's and so forth. Let's see. Oh, wrong direction. I am sorry. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. Um, but for first impression, I for some reason it wouldn't go away. I kept telling myself, "What's what's your objective here?" Um, but it really, really is the excitement about the brand. I think just uh, from the moment that I started writing with the uh, Colaro. I uh, realized, wow, I would have missed this completely had I not been gifted this pen and started, you know, uh, playing around with it. I was, I was really um, intimidated by it at first, and now I have to laugh because it's just silly. Um, they're, they're actually so much easier than so many other <coughs> pens that I have in terms of just inking them up by... And the only reason I dunk the nib is because I want to start writing just immediately and I write fast and so on. But uh, it would eventually make its way into the feed and be ready if I just had the patience. So, you know, you could just fill it and wait. But I like to dunk the nib and get it started and just go for it. And that's all. So I think that's it. And I'm, I'm noticing that I wanted to go face to face with this video and do some more talking. But what I think I'm going to do because of uh, reasons on my storage in my uh, camera, I'm going to go ahead and do a separate chatty video, and we'll just keep this at first impressions, and I will pick up everything I forgot to say in the uh, description box, and also if you ask questions that I can answer, I'll try to answer them. But I'm going to link you to SBRE Brown's review of the Opus 88 Clear Demonstrator, it was fantastic and it answered all the questions I had in deciding whether I wanted to um, spend my money that way by buying one to try it. And I'm really super glad that I did. Somebody's cooking. <laughs> that's, that's the uh, oven timer in the background, I think. Um, so I'll say goodbye for now and uh, I'll see you on the next video and, and I'll see you in the comments. Bye for now.